So another way I like to use virtual tracks is for mastering. So um, I got a little mastering chain set up, you know what I'm saying? Something, you know, two of the main elements that I like to use when I'm doing a, um, a master. Like I like I like stuff to knock and I like stuff to sound, you know, warm. Like stuff to sound full, warm, and knock. I want it to knock. That's the, that's the three main things, you know, that I want to achieve with my mixes. So two things I like to use. The SSL bus compressor from Universal Audio and the Studer Tape A800 from Universal Audio. They like the two main things I like to use. So what I would do is I highlight all my tracks that's gonna be that I want heard in the in the master. And um, you know, that's even auxiliary tracks and everything. I'll take that and I'll hold down shift option and I'll click virtual one two. And what that does is you can see it'll change the output to all of those tracks. It'll, it affected all of those tracks that I highlighted. So now, that means I got everything running. Look, I'm your brain cells with God's gift. I'm gonna get mine regardless. I'm trying to cop and park in four-door garages. Why y'all speaking that garbage I make money stretch like neck on the nostrils. And this gonna... So, at this point, I'll make my adjustments. Let's just do something quick. Look, numb your brain cells with God's gift. I'm going to get mine regardless. I'm trying to cop and park in four-door garages. Why y'all spitting that garbageness? I make money stretch like neck on the nostril. So I'm quick, right quick. So now that I got that straight, I set my audio track up, which is my print track. I set my print track up. And since I got all of the virtual instruments on the outputs of my tracks, I put it on the input here. And then from there, you just simply hit Look, now your brain cells with God's gift. I'm going to get mine regardless. I'm trying to cop and park in four-door garages. Why y'all spitting that garbageness? I make money stretch like... Once we record the whole song, you highlight it. Click this little guy down here. Any file that you got highlighted on this side in the in the mix window, I mean the uh, edit window, any file that you got highlighted will show up on your right side. Now I encourage you guys to label everything. Like if you got if this is your print track right here, label it print track or label it the name of the song. That way, when you export it and you send it off, uh, you see how it says audio. Three underscore zero three here. Now watch what I do when I make a new playlist. Now look what it does. Look, numb your brain cells with God's gift. I'm gonna get mine regardless. I'm trying to cop and park in four door garages. Why y'all spitting that garbageness? I make money stretch like neck on a nostril, and this gonna pop like red sausage. Maga hats and mumble raps, both will get scorched. We don't support that nonsense. I get it named it what the name of the track is. So that's a good tool to, you know, a good thing to know for when you trying to find it and export it. Like after you export it and you're ready to send it off, it's so much easier to find when you pre-label it. But once you do that, you go over to it, you right click on it, boom, export clips as files. Set your settings, whether you want to have send an MP3, you want it, you know, to be a stereo interleave or multiple mono, the bit depth, the sample rate, this, that, and the third. But the most important is to choose the destination directory. Because by default, it's going to go to your audio files folder. And that's going to make it a little bit hard to find. Um, it's easier when it's right here in front of you. You can just click choose. Go to, you know, wherever you like to keep your songs. Let's go to the desktop for right now. Hit open. And you hit export. And your song is on your desktop. So, I like to do it that way for two reasons. Like I say, first reason is really because, like, if I'm running demos, you know, and, I'm, and I need to use this particular plugin on this song, but I don't necessarily want to buy it just yet, I can, I can print it. I can run it through a virtual track and use it as an effect that way. Or the second reason, which is really one of the main, the main reason, is I kind of wanted to have the same characteristics. Like I wanted to react to the signal the same way as it would in the hardware world. You know what I mean? 
And it saves a lot of your processing too. That's like the third most important thing. You know what I mean? Like if you um, just have the Apollo Twin, you know, you don't have the Apollo Twin and the satellite, the Octo satellite, or you just have, you know, you just have the Apollo. You know what I mean? You can do it this way and, and you know, do your mixes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. This your man, Frank Dutch, man. I'm out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Frank Dutch Music. Y'all get with me, man. Subscribe, 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 man. Do not forget to hit that bell and slap a like on this video if it was informative to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm out of here. Peace.